Taking a look underneath the hood, the two wires came through the firewall. Each fuse is labeled, moves on into the fuse. There's two screw down points there. Keep in mind these fuse holders actually detach off of this plastic mount. And you can remove the whole mount without affecting the wires themselves. Loop back around. There again, labels on to tell you which is which in case you do have to pull them apart for whatever reason, you'll know which one goes back to which. Wire connected to the battery. That's what it looks like. Before we can do any testing, we have to set up the DSR-1 to its just basic settings, meaning crossover and whatnot, and also tell it what it's in. Setup mode, setup device. In the top, it has the picture of the car with the gear, maestro. Scroll to what we're doing. We're doing a two-way up front, rear and sub. Select OK. Subwoofer level is not connected, setup complete. And then once we're on this page, it'll give us an overview of what we just did. Select advanced tune, crossover. In the top, you'll see a speaker icon, select that. Select the pair of speakers you'd like to adjust. We'll start with the three and a halfs in the dash. You're gonna want a high pass filter for those. Start at 350, select enter. We'll select a 24 dB octave slope. Select the speaker icon again. For this, we want a band pass. The high pass will set to 80, and the low pass will match up to that 350. These are just preliminary numbers, just so we have something that we can use while tuning it. Rears, high pass. It's already set to 80, so we'll leave it there and just adjust our crossover to 24. Subwoofers, we need a low pass filter there. We'll leave that at 80 also. Select home. Select setup, select manage presets. Select the plus icon which will bring up create user preset. Download from device, select edit, and we're gonna name it this truck, which is a white Ram. And we'll go into our notes and we'll put in the notes what's in the car. Upload to device, select yes. This will take everything that we just did and move it onto the device now. Select home, and I always like to go back into my adjustments and make sure that everything stayed. We're good there. This is a safe point we can be at now. We have everything crossed over. We should be able to turn the volume up, have no problems there. We'll grab our phone, we'll play some pink noise, make sure everything's playing the way it should. We'll slide the box in, make sure it works. Basically, we just need to do a bunch of testing at this point and make sure that everything is what it needs to be before we put that back seat back in. Because once the back seat goes back in, it's almost too late. Every speaker is making sound. We put our ears on it. Go into the settings for the radio now. We have to check balance and fader. The balance and fader checks out like it just did. Go back into the app, advanced tune, and select trim level. Trim level allows us to turn on and off as well as adjust the volume for every speaker. If you select the unchained logo in the center, then that will unpair them. I'm gonna turn all of these off. We have no noise. And that tells us that all the speakers are playing on their corresponding channels, exactly what we were hoping for. Next step is to move on to polarity testing to make sure that all the speakers are moving in the direction we want. Just like we did earlier where we tested the wiring to see if they were all correct, now we're going to test the whole system. That'll be from the radio, through the DSP, through the amplifiers, and out to the speakers. Fernando's checking the passenger side. Driver's side checks out. I'll check the rears. The whole purpose of polarity testing is to make sure that the speakers are moving in the directions that you had anticipated them moving. In some cases, the dash speakers may need to be backwards from the door speakers, or the whole system might need to be flipped so that you don't get echo in the Bluetooth. You just wanna make sure that what you planned on doing, it's actually doing, which is good. And in this case, all the speakers pop the direction we had hoped. Most of the time, it doesn't go this smooth. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of things that have the potential to get kind of backwards or RCA gets switched. 
I mean, you can be as methodical as you want, but it's a lot of connections that need to be made. In this case, right on point. What I want to do is screw the driver's side rear seat into place, but set the passenger side rear seat into place. Not actually screw it down, just set it there. I still need to get to the gains, which means I'm gonna to need to pull that seat forward to control the gains while we're tuning the system. I want to make sure that the seat is in though. When you're tuning a car, make sure that the floor mats and everything that's gonna be in the car is in the car. Like these seat covers and carpets and all the stuff we take off, because those could change the way the car sounds. These have a different absorption than the leather seats that are underneath them. Make sure the car is is driver condition while we're tuning it. According to the instructions, these are going to sit something like this. I wanna get the seat kind of put in place first though, and then lift it up and put these in. Comes with the four new bolts for the front. Make sure to hand thread the bolts in first. Seats firmly in place, the back stays put, moves up and down, gives us that extra inch of room for the subwoofer enclosure. I can get to all these gain controls with this seat out. So we'll slide the other one into place, set it in there. For this install, we're gonna be using P310s. Give us our boom, our bass, and all that. This guy right here, P3, one of my favorite woofers. Big, nice, thick rubber surround, aluminum cone, aluminum dust cap. It has this cool trim around it, which brings us to one of its cool features. It has this unique basket design. This is a dual four. We're gonna be running each one of these two ohm to get us the one ohm mono. But why this is a unique design and why I like this so much is it gives us the ability to use these cool grills that they make. Now how these grills work, is they set onto the speaker just like this. Four notches that line up with the through holes for this. This then sits on top of it like this and we get this nice heavy duty grill. This is the Fox Acoustics box for this truck. It has the Ram logo in it, which means this is going to downfire. I originally thought it was gonna upfire, but it downfires, which is even better because now we don't have to worry about something accidentally getting caught underneath the seat and getting stuck and smacking around in the woofer. The speaker cups are here on my bench. I have wire all ready to go. I'm gonna solder these up and get them into the box. These boxes do have Rhino liner on them. It is a good suggestion to pre-drill the holes just not go into them. One down, one to go. Repeat the process with this one, then we can get it into the truck and hear how it sounds. All right, let's slide the box into place. Well, wouldn't you know it? It was just cruising along, smoking, just having a great time. Everything was going great. We were into the tune, got the laptop set up over here, jamming on the iPad. And it was to that point that we've talked about before, we get in and you listen to it, something, something weird. Looked great on the RTA. Like everything was looking wonderful there, but I got in the car and I was just like, it's, something's going on. Darn it, wouldn't you know it. The problem we were having is that the power base six by nines that we we're, this is the first time we've ever used them and there's nothing wrong with them. They're OE replacements. And we knew that we'd be pushing them really hard with the power we were gonna give them. We knew we were gonna be doing that, but we're like, you know, let's just give them a try. Sometimes you gotta try things out. We know that they work in the factory application that they're made for, but we wanted to see if we could use them in something like this, do a little bit different and push them beyond really what they're made for. And they didn't like it at all. And the problem we ran into is that they, they were making funny noises because they were just getting overdriven. And you could turn them down and they would sound good, which means less power, all that. So we had to make an audible. It's like, all right, do we leave them play at the lower power? No, that, that wasn't working. It wasn't working at all. We're taking them out and we're putting in the Kenwood 69, 0203, that mid base that we put in everything that we typically would put in a RAM, which was my first thought on putting in here, but I was like, we got a new speaker and let's try it. It didn't work for this application, which is okay. 
If this would have been a factory upgrade where we kept that little tiny factory amplifier, it would have sounded fabulous. If you do need to replace your factory speaker, your factory two ohm speaker, by all means, get the power base, you're gonna love it. But when you're putting power to them, like we did, just not the best idea. We ended up going with our favorites, the Kenwood Exelon. It's in there. Frano's finishing getting that door put back together. We'll slap this one back on. We'll just do another retune on the mid bass for those. I was really happy. I'm loving the way it's sounding. It's sounding really, really good. It was just at higher volumes. It was getting this weird distortion that we'll save them for what they're made for and we'll put these bad boys in and we'll rock out from there. This one is done. I'm pretty excited about that. You know what we should do though, before we finish it, is show you what the box looks like underneath the back seat because we spent so much time talking about it. So let's take a look at that. Here's what this looks like. With the spacers in place, you get the nice Ram logo on the front, the cool Fox Acoustics logo on the bottom there. That's it, this has been a fun one. A nice little seven channel active. If you have one of these Dodges, Chryslers, Rams, whatever it is where you have that, three and a half up on the dash. This is even for Toyotas too. If you're not gonna buy that set that comes with the mid-range and the speaker and the passive crossover that works well together and you wanna design your own, best solution is to go full active and get all the control that you need. All right guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Fernando, if you please. On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.